Hello guys and welcome to Afternoon Talks with Alex, a type of podcast where we're delving deeply into different topics. The topic for today is going to be hustle culture. However, not in a way that you can hear everywhere else. We're going to discuss what no one seems to be talking about in hustle culture and also the toxic traits it may bring and in general how to go about it and what my thoughts are. So, today I'm having a coffee, take away this time, because we are all busy people, right? So there is not even a moment to make ourselves the coffee at home. Uh, just kidding, it's, it's not that busy that you cannot make yourself a coffee at home, I hope. Um, let's just start from the beginning to understand what hustle culture is, if you never heard about it. However, it's been a very loud topic, especially in the last few years. You know, when many people are telling you to hustle, 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 which means work hard, work hard, work even harder. And it basically makes you win, makes you achieve success in life without necessarily having all the best necessary skills to achieve that success. So what I mean by that is you will just be better than people who are doing less work just by doing more work. So you don't even have to be the best in whatever you're doing. It's basically the concept that you're going to outwork others who are simply doing less work on daily basis. So yes, uh, that's what we're going to be discussing now. And I've been kind of a fan of a hustle culture a few years ago when I first heard about it. Because a few years ago, I mean, when I was like 17, 18 years old, I've realized that, you know, I'm young. I know nothing about life. I actually don't have any experience, like any good experiences in any of the skills in life because I wasn't the type of person who had one particular hobby, which I was polishing from my early childhood. So that kind of appealed to me, the idea of hustle culture, because I realized that I will be able to outrun everyone else just by working hard. And because at that moment, I didn't want to dedicate myself to any relationships. You know, it just didn't feel like this is a thing for me. I wanted to be an independent, strong, young woman, woman, sorry, who is going to achieve success in her life by herself without any help. So it's easier said than done, I gotta admit, because at the same time I was trying to understand myself better and to experience different things because in my childhood I I was not allowed to do too many things and I don't even mean bad things like, you know, going partying, meeting people, bad people, um, taking drugs, this kind of stuff. I was not really able to do anything because I was just meant to study, study and study. So after I left my home, I realized that I am not knowing myself at all. I don't know what I like. My whole identity was just that I was a student, a great student. And you know, I was meant to go studying later. I was meant to become a doctor or a lawyer or actually a psychotherapist because I rejected the, the first two, but it was also a long career um, in front of me. So I kind of realized that I don't want any of that. And what happened is that very quickly, I noticed that there is a very big gap between the hustle culture and between trying to understand myself. So what hustle culture requires from you is that you pretty much reject anything that doesn't relate to the work you need to do. So your emotions don't matter. Your relationships don't matter, right? You can build those relationships after you're rich and famous. Nothing matters. That's how it seemed like. The only thing is work. So I cannot say that I dedicated myself 100% into this ideal idea of hustle work. Um, because as I said, I also wanted to develop my interests 
develop my personality and myself, which, um, which I quickly realized is in conflict because you cannot work all the time and at the same time explore and question yourself, the world around you, the concepts, pretty much anything. So as much as I've been trying to dedicate myself to the hustle culture, I love the idea, absolutely. I was not fully doing it because I quickly found out that it's more important for me to actually take the risk and establish my identity. Because maybe after I establish that identity, I will realize that hustle culture is actually a non-important thing. And I was kind of hoping for it because I didn't have too many meaningful relationships in my life. And I didn't want it to stay like this forever. And I was kind of scared that if I'm gonna show myself that I'm able to achieve success fully on my own, without anyone, then I will just enhance this idea in my mind that I don't need anyone around me for the rest of my life. And I really didn't want that. So that was a few years ago. Um, as you can see already from what I'm saying, I haven't been grinding all night long. I definitely was dedicating towards the little projects I was having, which was extremely fulfilling. However, I wasn't doing it for long enough to bring me to any point. So here we are a few years later and I'm trying to develop some of the side projects of my own at this very moment. You might know me from Graphology Alex, so I finally decided to do something consistently, something I'm passionate about. And I gotta say that I, I was actually already talking about it in my previous video that the more work I'm doing, the more I feel like I should be doing much more because I'm not doing enough. And it's kind of a toxic way of thinking because, you know, it puts you in a state like, well, the more I work, the less satisfied I am, then what the hell are we doing here? And when I think about this hustle culture now, again, because I'm kind of in the position where the more I work, the more I can achieve, right? I am not tied up to the hours of work, like nine to five. So no matter what I achieve throughout these hours, I'm still gonna get the same pay. Um, when you're trying to grow your own business or a side hustle or any project that you're particularly interested in outside the nine to five, you are not being kept in, in chains with anything. So, yeah, I'm finding myself every other day, actually every day at around 7.30, 8.30 p.m. when it's about dinner time and I think, you know, maybe if I would skip the dinner, skip the beautiful procedure of making dinner, if I just ordered McDonald's or some soup from Sainsbury and just ate it in five minutes, I would be able to dedicate the rest of the evening for my work. And I don't know, maybe you are facing the same kind of struggles and dilemmas with whatever you're going through. But for me, the other side of Alex is telling me that, well, listen, nutrition is important. Time off is important. I'm not even talking about work-life balance here because that goes a little step further. But I'm talking about the fact that if I've been working hard since 6 a.m. in the morning, I am an early bird, by the way, so I absolutely love waking up early and starting work early. So I've worked throughout the whole day. I mean, I think I deserve at least those two hours, not even in the evening, for myself to recharge so tomorrow I can start over with lots of energy. Coffee break. So tomorrow I can start over with lots of energy because otherwise I'm afraid that I'm going to burn out. Like, have you ever pushed so hard for, for a week or two or a month or maybe even just a few days? 
usually students do that before their dissertation right you you can actually go all night long studying but then you need to recharge for an extra few days or basically you just finish that dissertation so you don't need to do it consistently for the rest of the year whereas when you're trying to grow your business or a side hustle you need that consistency and it's not gonna be a week it's not gonna be a month if it's gonna be a year well then you're lucky <laughs> but it's usually way longer so i'm just battled between you know taking care of myself and pursuing these extra hours of work to achieve my success and many times throughout the day i am finding myself as well thinking like why am i doing all of these things for things like laundry things like washing the dishes i have to cut so i need to empty their litter box why am i doing it like in a few days i need to do it again and again i could dedicate so much so many hours of my time into work no matter what's going on in my house it can be a mess but my website is growing or my business is growing i can clean later or i can even hire a cleaner but on the other side of the spectrum, you have this idea of, you know, your environment creates the environment that you have in your head. So if you have a mess around you in the house, you will find it difficult to focus on work. If you have a mess around you in the house, you will not be able to organize the ideas that you have in your head. You will get overwhelmed, you will get anxious, and you're very likely to leave whatever you're doing at this very moment so you see these are very two different ideas and i'm very battled between two dualities let's say i'm going to be talking more in depth about it in my next episode because i've already realized that it's a very interesting and important topic to understand but today i mainly want to talk about why nobody in hustle culture talks about the fact that we are human beings who need meaningful relationships who need a nutritious dinner who need to have a shower if not every day at least every two days who need to put deodorant and clean clothes on themselves in order to feel good in order to feel like they're functional in this society because when you throw yourself completely into work none of those things is gonna be taken care of and by any chance if you're having any animals living around you well you gotta take care of them if you don't clean the cage of your hamster or the litter tray of your cat if you don't walk your dog why do you even have them so what are you gonna do now? Give them up because you decided to start a side hustle and grow a business? Or are you gonna take that time off from your business to walk the dog? Well, it, and another example is if you're living with someone, another human being in the house. So for example, I'm living with my boyfriend now. I, I generally have no idea how it, how it ended up that I am in a relationship. Because as I've said already, I was not seeing myself doing something like that. And I very much understand that it's a lot about dedication. It's a lot about commitment. It's a lot about daily little things that you do for each other. It's like, oh, I'm going to do the laundry for you and fold your clothes. So you, after you come back home from work, you don't have to do this. I'm going to cook you dinner. I'm going to organize the books you have on the shelf. And all of these things, little things, take time. They take time off from your work, from your project that you're working on. <sighs> and this is an unbearable, right? It puts you down in a way that you're not going to achieve anything because you are not hustling like this. And I... And I basically just want to reach the conclusion in this video how sad I am that nobody talks about it. That the only thing people talk about is to work, work, work. But 
nobody mentions the little small daily things that the life actually consists of. And yes, you can absolutely choose to live a different life and reject all of those things. However, we need to think about what kind of person is going to make us become. And do we want to become that person? Probably a person that is way more cold, without meaningful relationships in their life, possibly very lonely, possibly very unhappy, and with a mess in the house. So another thing that I can touch upon in that topic, that's going to be a last thing for today, is people saying don't work hard, work smart. So I feel like this might be a big defense mechanism of the people who are actually protecting hustle culture, which I personally believe is a little bit toxic. And when you work smart, you are prioritizing more important tasks. You are thinking twice before spending a month working on something. You're thinking about the most optimal ways to do that project. You, you basically do it with your mind, right? It's not about quantity, it's about quality of your work. So it doesn't matter that you're gonna spend thousand days editing really bad YouTube videos. It's better if you actually learn the skills, think about the project, do your research, create one video that's gonna take you one week to make, but it's gonna be a good one and it's gonna be noticed by many people. I'm not saying that my videos are like this yet. However, we are all learning. <laughs> I hope they're not so bad, guys. So, when you work smart, you will actually understand that in into working smart, another concept that goes is actually having your own life, which allows you to have balance in work and in life. So this is what I really wanted to talk about, what I wanted to share with you today, because I've been folding a lot of laundry in the last few days and <laughs> that constant thought in my head that you're not working, you're not working was something that was unbearable and I don't believe we should put ourselves down because of such little mistakenly interpreted things. Let me know your thoughts on this topic, how you feel about hustle culture, have you ever tried hustling yourself and how it ended up for you? Um, and remember that those five minutes taken in the morning to make your own coffee, if you like it, if you don't, that, that's fine. But if you really like the ritual of your morning coffee, it's not going to take away your success, okay? It can actually contribute to it because you will feel like every single morning you achieved something. You are already on your way of success. So I want to leave you with that, guys. And I wish you a beautiful afternoon. Bye-bye.